18, section 2. And the big idea here is that economic systems are the way in which a society organizes production and consumption of goods and services. And so, today, trade off, because with any decision, there's something that you're missing out on. Opportunity cost, which is the formal term for that. Of course, marginal cost, marginal benefit, and then finally, cost benefit analysis. But the real question that I want to around here is when you make a decision to engage in some activity or to purchase something, that means some activity or something that you will not be getting as a return. We make those decisions all of the time and we reflect types of decisions all of the time. So we always have to ask, is it worth it? Well, hopefully the process that I'll be teaching you guys today will help you to make better decisions because really economics is a part of our daily life. Um, so, costs and benefits. So first off, to make an informed decision, we have to understand the costs and benefits of any choice that we make. For example, whatever choice we make will produce a trade-off. A trade-off is the alternative that you face if you choose to do one thing over another. You chose to attend this school. Do you ever wonder what it would have been like had you chosen to go to another school? We hope you're happy here, but you can't help but wonder every now and then, what would life have, life have been like had I taken a different path? And I certainly wonder that too. It's just part of the human condition. We worry and we think about what is the trade-off related to that decision. Every individual decision that we make has some degree of trade-off. When I bought my phone, I knew this would be my phone for about four years. You know, it wasn't a short-term purchase. I'm definitely buying it and keeping it until it doesn't work anymore. So I'm hoping at least four years, maybe more. So that means whatever other phone in the whole wide world I could have gotten won't be happening. And that's a trade-off. I made a trade-off with my phone, but even businesses make trade-offs. When Google chose to purchase YouTube, that was a huge financial decision that they had to carefully weigh the cost of. For example, GE, um, you know, produces light bulbs and fixtures. They're a nationwide company and they have a branch here in Henderson County. They're for sale and they are considering new ownership and whoever purchases GE is going to have to weigh that decision very carefully using some of the same process that we're going to be looking at. So let's say that Grace decides to purchase GE. It's a big purchase, right? We're talking multi-million dollar purchase. So with that is an opportunity cost. An opportunity cost is the cost of the next best alternative use of time and money when choosing to do one thing rather than another. Now unless she is Bill Gates, GE would probably be all that she has the resources to do. Now let's say that a bank agrees to loan her the money to purchase GE. That's another one, right? She's going to have to convince someone to loan her. She's going to be in debt for the rest of her life perhaps by purchasing this company. But of course it could be a win she could become the next Henderson County billionaire. Maybe. Or not. Maybe her company would fail. But she had to make that choice with a clear understanding of the alternatives. Of course, these types of decisions involve time and money. Any inconveniences that go into it, for example, when you do your buying a car project, if you choose the fancy car, that's wonderful. But that comes with a very expensive payment. It's hard to visualize what that looks like until you have to make a payment. I love my car. I will probably never buy a brand new one again. But I did. And it came with a four-year fixed interest $585 a month payment. That's a lot of money. For a first-year teacher, that was a lot of money. I'll never do it again. Again, love my car, I'm happy it's paid for, 
I probably should have weighed the opportunity cost of purchasing a brand new car before I did it. So, most decisions involve a trade-off of some type, unless your resources are near infinite, which almost no one has resources. So, again, this is something that people do for a living. Economists make a reasonable salary. You can teach this in academia. You can be a consultant for large firms. My wife was an economist when she managed the books for a large country club. She kept their finances. And so economists develop ways of measuring types of cost. And this gets into budgeting a little bit. So different types of cost that you will experience in your life. Number one, fixed cost. When you make out your budget, whether you choose to do it for your life as it stands now or your dream job in the future, you're going to have to weigh the fixed cost with the variable cost. Fixed cost are going to be once you've decided on the car that you want, are you going to have a payment? That payment for X amount of years is now a fixed cost. So when I made my budget as a first year teacher, I had my rent, it's four fifty a month, utilities, fifty bucks a month, car payment, five eighty five a month. So off the top of my salary was about twelve hundred a month in fixed cost. It hurt. <laughs> As a first year teacher, I made right around two grand a month after taxes, so that meant that my variable budget was roughly 800 a month. That's what I actually got to play with. It's not a lot when you think about it. That's groceries, that's gas, that's any fun things I want to do. Those were the variable costs that I had to consider. And then finally, total cost. Total cost is the both, both fixed and variable costs added together. My budget in terms of total cost, two grand a month. That's what I had to live on. It wasn't bad. I mean, I could go out and eat now and then. I could go have a social life and I still did fun things, but I had to carefully weigh those things against the things I wouldn't get to do. You know, for example, if I met my friends out and we had a nice dinner, um, then I need to be cautious through the week if I'm going to do that on the weekend. Next is marginal cost. Marginal cost is the additional, uh, excuse me, the additional or extra opportunity cost associated with an action. For example, maybe I'm planning out my weekend. When I'm weighing the marginal cost, I need to think about additional expenses. You know, DC was an awesome trip. It was also expensive. <laughs> Everywhere we went to eat, the Smithsonian was nearly 20 bucks just to get a decent meal. You know, mall food is not the best, it's not the cheapest. So we had to think about how to account for unintended costs. Next are types of revenue. So on the business end, total revenue is the number of units sold multiplied by the average price per unit. So with your jelly donuts, if they're a dollar a piece and you sell 100 of them, your total revenue is $100. $100, that's what you can count on. $100 a day, $100 every day. Now what businesses also have to account for, is there, is there a way to increase revenue? Is there a way to provide marginal revenue? Because here's the thing, if you know you're gonna sell 100 donuts a day, and you know you're gonna charge a dollar per donut, that means you're gonna make $100 per day. It's not a bad living if you're the sole proprietor, if you're the only business owner, you can make a living on a hundred bucks a day. What if you could sell a hundred and ten donuts per day? Well, guess what guys? It's still a day's work. You've increased your revenue 
without increasing the hours that you have to work. That's called marginal revenue. That extra 10 donuts, guys, that's more money you're making without having to work any harder. It's pretty sweet, right? And so that's called marginal revenue. But next we have to think about marginal benefit. You see, when you weigh the marginal cost, if you're gonna go on the DC trip, it's gonna be 250 bucks to go. It's gonna be about 200 bucks worth of food and souvenirs, and then maybe any other marginal cost associated. Maybe you get hurt, maybe something happens, maybe you wanna really buy that nice thing for yourself, who knows? But there's also a marginal benefit, and that's the additional or extra benefit associated with an action. You know, maybe you've never been to DC before. Maybe it's an eye-opening experience. Maybe you went into um, one of the government buildings and you were like, oh my gosh, I want to work in politics. Maybe you walked by the FBI building and you were like, that's so me someday. And maybe it changed your world. Well, again, that's a marginal benefit, an unintended benefit that came along with that action. And so careful decision making involves a cost benefit analysis. This is an economic model that compares the marginal cost, you know, how can we account for any possible unintended costs with the marginal benefits. So the more careful we are with the type of decision making, the more we can eliminate unknowns. You know, when I was trying to budget for DC trip, I knew, okay, 250 off the top. Okay, that's a fixed cost. We know that's the cost. However, the marginal cost, do I want to eat at the Smithsonian? Gosh, 20 bucks for a cheeseburger and fries, really? Oh yeah, 20 bucks, cheeseburger, fries, and a soda. Well, okay. Or I've had students pack their lunch, totally. You know, shop at Aldi, 50 bucks, feeds you for the whole week. If it even costs 50, maybe 40. Versus 40 will get you two meals at the Smithsonian. So that type of cost benefit analysis requires some mature decision making where you're having to choose and weigh the benefits of a choice over the cost. Now here's the thing. If you do the math and you realize that DC is going to cost you almost $450 at the end of the day and that's not worth it to you, don't do it. If you realize that having that nice new car, say you want a Land Rover, those are really cool. But then you look at the price tag on a Land Rover and you go, wow, it's 50 grand. They're sweet cars, but 50 grand, really? And maybe that doesn't mean anything to you now, but you start to look at what that means on the monthly cost. And maybe it still doesn't mean anything to you. It certainly didn't to me when I got a Subaru, they were like 585 a month. And I was like, sweet, I've never made much money before anyway, why not? until I had to live on it, then I realized. But what I'm trying to teach you is that if you can actually think about those things ahead of time, then maybe you won't lock yourself into a four year fixed interest rate like I did. So when you can carefully do the cost benefit analysis, you can actually eliminate unknowns. You can begin to think about what it's gonna look like. Okay, so really cost benefit analysis is all about making good decisions. Uh, when you choose to engage in an activity, is it going to be fun? Awesome. Is that fun worth the risk? Is it? Is it not? Don't know. Right? 